Oh shit. Oh shit, is there maybe more to the story than we thought there was? Give me one second there, dudes. Um just replying to someone on the Discord. Um, so, yeah, there's a whole fucking lot going on in that cutscene, but, um, basically we have, we have, like, the abstract daddy here, and a lot of the monsters in Silent Hill, or Silent Hill 2 specifically, are, like, representative of, like, a particular trauma, so the popular theory goes anyway, and the abstract daddy is, like, representative of, you know, possible sexual violence, it's... Not much of a stretch when you consider Angela's dialogue and, like, just the visuals of this room. And, yeah, it's it's horrifying. It's really awful. Uh, I think the game kind of deals with it as well as you can, but fuck, that's, that's some heavy stuff. Um, what we got, what we got. Oh, yeah, there's some puzzle here. Um, Rami Bop asks, will there be a summer favorite things video? I think I did a summer video, but yes, there, there's, a, there's a favorite things video coming up. Uh, I'm, I'm excited about it. It's a good one. It's not a Halloween one because I think the Halloween video I made last year was just like, it was too scary. And it fucked a lot of people up, and so we're just not gonna do anything scary this year. I'm not bringing back Mega Die Patch Wolf either, because that was just that was way too horrifying for people to handle. And I'm really sorry about that if you're one of the people who got like just infinitely horrified for that. Um, comforting. Um, Crows and Birds says your videos are really comforting and relaxing after a long day. Thank you, dude. I appreciate that. Man was hanged for the crime of swindling. Justice and revenge has been served. This man was hanged for the crime of arson. Justice and revenge have been served. This man was hanged for the crime of thievery. Justice and... What was this man hanged for? This man was hanged for the crime of murder. Justice and revenge have been served. Um... I think we had a subscription just there a second ago. I'm sorry, I know someone subscribed, but I think I might have forgot. We'll do a subscription read at the end. We'll, we'll head over to Streamlabs and get all that shit. Because uh, I, I don't want to... I don't want to screw anyone over for that. Dead men, dead men, swinging in a tree. How many dead men do you see? Tongue turned blue and face gone grey. Watch them as they twist and sway. The first one killed the butcher man, then cooked him in a frying pan, served him to his hungry guests and gave them seconds on request. The next one with his smile and sweets stole poor children off the streets. To men who dressed unsavory, he sold them into slavery. Break into home at... Breaking into a home at night, the thief he had a nasty fright, filled with fools, head and ale, woke the morn in the county jail. The artist with the artist with his daunting skills tried his hand at painting bills, but caught in rain and was undone when the ink he'd used start to run. With promises of great return, taking gold he did not earn, 
bundled it up out of sight, quietly slipped off into the night. Three houses in Jesus Christ this goes on. Three houses it burn um, three houses ash burned, the sheriff with no place to turn, did spy a stranger to his town, locked him up and beat him down. Dead men, dead men, swinging in a tree. How many dead men do you see? Six foot long, six foot wide, round their necks the noose be tied. That's a creepy fucking poem, and someone put a lot of effort into that. So, I'm guessing you guys, like, get what we have to do here, but basically we have to go back to the previous room where the dead men were and learn, like, the order that they were hanged in um, and then pull the nooses in this order. Basement. Whiteboard, diary of the roof, she is an angel. Is it at the bottom? Um, oh man, we have a lot of notes. Man, she's an angel. The director's key. Wall scratches, map on bar. Dead men, dead men. Dead men, dead men, how do you see? Tongue to blah, blah, blah. The first one killed. The butcher man cooked him in a frying pan. So the first one's a murderer. Um, Z Matrix, that's exactly not what you do. Oh, really? Read the smaller sign next to it. Okay. I'm such a fucking idiot. Okay. Notice. Only the sinless one can help you here. Mistakenly pull on a criminal's rope and your reward will be returned to you in the shape of... Of the most wondrously strange. Hmm. Okay. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Thanks for the warning, dude. <laughs> um. I'm gonna pull on the wrong one just to see what happens. The animation for James pulling the rope is so fucking creepy. Like, what does that look like to you? And that's where we go when we get it right. <sighs> oh, no, I don't want to be even kind of back in this room. Is the innocent one. This man was hanged for the crime of murder. Justice and revenge has been served. This man was hanged for the crime of counterfeiting. Justice and revenge have been served. Oh god, the, the trigger point on some of these is like really specific and it's kind of hard to actually make it go. This man is hanged for the crime of thievery, justice and revenge have been served. This man is hanged for the crime of arson, justice and revenge have been served. This man is hanged for swindling, justice and revenge has been served. This man is hanged for the crime of kidnapping. Okay, so which one of them is innocent? The first one killed the butcher man, cooked him in a frying pan, served him on the hunger guests and gave the seconds on a quest. The next one with his smile and sweet stole poor children off the streets. To men who dressed unsavory, he sold them into slavery. Okay, he ain't innocent. Breaking into home at night, the thief had a nasty fright. Filled his foolish head with ale, woke the morning in the county jail. The artist, with his daunting skills, tried his hand at painting bills, but caught the rain wasn't done. When the rink, he started to run. With promise of great return, taking gold he did not earn, bundled it up in the sight, quite quietly slipped into the night. Huh. And uh, just one thing. Uh, um, 
three houses into Ashburn. The sheriff, with no place to turn, did spy a stranger to his town, locked him up and beat him down. Okay, so the arsonist is innocent. Um, Eichmann says, just want to let you know that you inspired me to get back into working and checking out new stuff. Even got an audible sub to listen to new audiobooks when I work when I work out. Thank you for being. P.S. I'd love to see you play some tabletop RPGs. Thank you, dude. I really appreciate that. Best of luck with the uh, workouts and the audible. Um, I listened to Louis Theroux's new audiobook on there. It was good. I'd recommend it. Um, especially if you well watch if you haven't watched Louis Theroux, watch some. Okay, so it's the top left dude who's innocent. Cool. Fuck, 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 okay. Hell yeah! Oh my god, there's so many of them! So, it's this dude that's innocent. Nothing troubling about the composition of this camera shot at all. It's totally fine. Hold it, and I think that should do it. Huh. Um, what the fuck? So it's definitely the. Oh! of the persecuted he left by the prisoner who was wrongly executed nice that's a nice little puzzle I like that Burnt Bread 98, I would love to see an Eyepatch Wolf ASMR. I don't know that people would really want that. I think, I yeah, I think that's something that might be, like, better in theory than it would be in real life. Hi, my name's Super Eyepatch Wolf, and uh, we're going to sit down and watch some anime. Uh, today we're going to watch some Yu Yu Hakusho, and... Um, this is my favorite episode, the death of the... Like, I don't think people would like that at all, and I'm sorry for everyone who just had to sit through that. But, yeah, that's 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 what you would be signing up for. It's locked. Oh, fuck. Maria? Maria? Maria, no! What happened to you? Fuck! Why? Why? No, I'm not doing ASMR. So fucked up, like what happened to her? Mary. That's so fucked up. Get to a fucking graveyard. Rad.
Uh, Infamous Morgan, thank you so much, dude. I appreciate that. Shotgun shells. And let's give this a save. Oh, God damn it! I fucking forgot that people could clip the ASMR shit. Oh, oh that's gonna be a thing, and I regret that an infinite amount, and God, that's on the internet now, and there's nothing I can- oh, fuck. Okay. Okay, I hope everyone enjoyed that, because I'm never, ever, ever doing that again. Oh, I sh how did I not see that coming? Absolutely on our band. Absolutely. Um, is that everywhere that's in here? I think it is. Thank you so much, dude. I appreciate it. Mm, no, it doesn't make sense. It sent us back this far. Fuck. I must have missed something. No, I'm not. People can't pay me to do that. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not becoming an ASMR streamer. I'm like, no disrespect to the people who are. Fucking make your money however you gotta, dude. But that that's that's not me. Uh, none of you guys can be in the honor band squad because if you were honor band, you obviously wouldn't be in the chat, so that's impossible. Um, Air Taco 88, thank you so much, dude. I appreciate that. I know I keep saying I appreciate it. I just there's nothing else in this room. Okay, so it must be the graveyard. We must be missing something in there. I guess it's something like really super obvious. Like, at this point, we must be fucking touching off the Earth's core. Oh, shit. Oh, it's our perfectly normal friend. It's Eddie, and he's being normal again. Eddie, what are you doing? What does it look like? Busted my balls. You fat, disgusting piece of shit. You make me sick. Fat ass, you're nothing but a waste of skin. You're so ugly, even your mama don't love you. Well, maybe he was right. Maybe I am nothing but a fat, disgusting piece of shit. But you know what? It doesn't matter if you're smart, dumb, Ugly, pretty, it's all the same once you're dead. And a corpse can't laugh. From 
now on, if anyone makes fun of me, I'll kill him. Just like that. Eddie, have you gone nuts? I knew it. You too. You're just like him, James. Hey, I didn't mean anything. Don't bother. I understand. You've been laughing at me all along, haven't you? Ever since we first met. I'll kill you, James! <laughs> Eddie? Eddie, why? You were so normal in every cutscene up until right now. Um, I don't think this is the proper fight yet, so fuck it, let's equip our shotgun. We have 130 shotgun rounds. I do like that in James's animation of the shotgun, you can tell he's never fired a weapon ever. Um, got some rifle shells. Pound a health drink. We're doing all right. We're doing all right. Oh. oh, did I just... I fucking did, didn't I? Yep, I went back the wrong way. Eddie, buddy? Do you know what it does to you, James? You doing okay there, champ? Man, this dude just started a YouTube channel. Your whole friggin' life. That's why I ran away after I killed the dog. Ran away like a scared little girl. Yeah, I killed that dog. It was fun. It tried to chew its own guts out. Finally died all curled up in a Okay, ball. this guy heard a dog. That's fucking wreck his shit. What does that mean, James? What does that mean? Don't you know that? Let's party! Let's party! Ah, he punched me. Ah, he's... I don't think a punch from Eddie would do a lot of damage. <laughs> this is just two people who can't fight at all fighting each other. Okay, I'm saying it right now. Eddie is not fucking killing me. Like, no way. I'll be cold in the ground before fucking Eddie kills me. Like, Pyramid Head got me that time. He did. But fucking Eddie? No. Damn. I'm pretty good at video games. Eddie? Eddie? I... I killed a... a human being. A human being. I think Eddie did break there for a little bit. Mary. 
Did you really die three years ago? Uh oh, what are you talking about, James? What's going on there, buddy? I might have missed some stuff in this room. Yeah, I did. Shotgun shells. So, like, there's three dead dudes in this room. Eddie? Eddie got pretty busy. He... He wasn't fucking around. Uh, where are we going? Where are we going? Oh shit, where well, I think we got here maybe a little sooner than I thought we would. Holy shit. We're at the boat. Oh my. You guys should look up this scene on the HD re-release of Silent Hill 2. It looks like trash. Like someone fucked up. So guys, if I'm not mistaken, we're actually coming up to like, basically the final part, the final stage of Silent Hill 2. And what time are we at? It's, it's not that late, but it's, it's late enough. Do we go for it all tonight? Or do we call it quits early? For the people who know... How... How how much how much longer would you say we have left before we finish up? Z Matrix, how, how much how much or Z Maratrix Maratrix? How much more do we have to go? Two hours maybe. Two hours. No, I, th I think if it's two hours, that's like a full stream session, and we'll leave that for another night. Hotel is long. Yeah, no, we won't. We won't do another two hours. That's too long. But we'll we'll do a little more. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, no, we'll le we'll leave it for a final stream. Um, Konzanagi, no, I I could not finish it before midnight, not here at least. Um, when would my next stream be? Um, I'm not maybe. Okay, actually. I, I think I'm going to be uploading next weekend, so it might not be then, but it'll be... It'll be sometime next weekend or Halloween. Like, we're going to beat this game by Halloween. Maybe on Halloween? Would you guys be up for, like, a Halloween stream? I would definitely miss stuff, so I would not be able to do it in 20 minutes. Air Taco 88 do you have any plans for other games after this? There's some shorter games I want to stream, and there's some, like... I really like streaming horror games. That's kind of my favorite thing to stream. Um, 
So I think I'd like to find some like weirder, shorter horror games and stream them. Um, I probably won't be streaming as much after October because um, I honestly I just have some like real big videos coming up that like I know I'm gonna have to go all in on, and um, the combination of streaming regularly and making videos like I know it's only like an evening a week, but it actually kind of does take it out of you. So I probably won't be able to do that. That'd be class on Halloween. Halloween stream. Um, great. Uh, yeah, we've been rowing for a while. It takes a long time to row over to the hotel. Cousin Aggie, yes, that probably will. Um, okay, you know what, dudes? Um, unless something comes, unless something like horrific comes out of nowhere, I'll stream Halloween, uh, and we'll we'll finish Silent Hill two on Halloween. Um, but that sounds like it could be a lot of fun. IRA Ninja, no, he is not rowing the boat very efficiently. Yeah, I'm pretty. I've I've, I've seen Silent. I've seen um, Siren Blood Curse before. That seems pretty cool. Jesus, this does take a while, doesn't it? So, um, that cutscene with Mary in the prison. I think that part is so fucking good because it's the part where you're really like not sure what Mary is anymore. Like it's like, is it actually Maria or is it Mary? And it's oh, it's so so good. Um. Oh shit! You know what we have as well? We also have the Restless Dreams DLC for Silent Hill 2. I've never I've never played that. We might do that as like a post stream or something. You're supposed to follow the light. Oh shit. I haven't been paying, paying attention at all. And now I don't even know if I'm turning properly. Where's that light? Where's that light? I never knew there was like a... No wonder this bit's always taken me so fucking long. Where's that light? Where's that light? Ah, there we go. We have a destination. Um. Yeah, I think this makes Metal Gear Solid's ladder look like positively sensible. Um, Dark Kebabs, Mega Mega Die Patch Wolf won't be showing up on in the in the new favorite things video. Uh, that character was too frightening, and it was a mistake, and I really regret doing it. So no, he's he, there's no way that thing's coming back. Um, Zermaro Two, it, well, it does. It doesn't have DLC technically because DLC didn't exist when this game came out, not on consoles at least. But it does have an add-on called Restless Dreams, which was um, that was basically an add-on starring Maria. Uh, does anyone know how long the Restless Dreams content is? Because we could get another stream out of that potentially. Um, 
Um, Sorry, Goth, do you still need an essay to get into Kamen Rider? I suppose I do. Oh, shit. We're here. Yeah, no, Die Patch Wolf is never coming back. It was... It was just... It was just too dangerous. And then I'd sent Zero Maru 2. Oh, fuck. Looks like it's their special place. This place hasn't changed at all in three years. There's a fountain in the shape of a bird. No water is coming out right now. Found that little mermaid music box. Two hours thirty. Four. Um, a game I'd really love to play on stream is Azura's Wrath. I think that could be a really fun stream game. How fucking spooky is that? Jesus Christ. Just immediately this giant... Okay, we'll do a little run around here. We got a map. I don't want to finish up quite yet. I'm so excited to be back in the hotel. I don't like I don't want to hype it too much for people who like haven't seen it but like waiting for you in room 312 Mary are you there or maybe Why don't we read Jane Oh fuck I look okay the letter doesn't say anything. There's nothing written on the stationery. The same letter we've been reading the whole game. It's fucking like there's nothing there now. And that is some amazing ass storytelling. What's going on? What's going on? Oh, this shit's so good. Oh, it's so good. Look at this fucking hotel, like, it is so spooky. Did I scare you? Yeah, you did. You're here to find Mary, aren't you, James? Well, have you? No. Is that why you're here too? She's here, isn't she? If you know where she is, tell me. I'm tired of walking. I wish I knew. But she said it in her letter. What letter? Wanna read it? But don't tell Rachel, okay? Who's Rachel? She was our nurse. I took it from her locker. This shit's kind of sad. My dearest Laura, I'm leaving this letter with Rachel to give to you after I'm gone. I'm far away now, in a quiet, beautiful place. 
Please forgive me for not saying goodbye before I left. Be well, Laura. Don't be too hard on the sisters. And Laura, about James. I know you hate him because you think he isn't nice to me, but please give him a chance. It's true he may be a little surly sometimes and he doesn't laugh much, but underneath it, he's a really sweet person. Laura, I love you like my very own daughter. If things had worked out differently, I was hoping to adopt you. Happy 8th birthday, Laura. Your friend forever, Mary. Laura, how old are you? Um, I turned eight last week. So, Mary couldn't have died three years ago. What the fuck? Could, could she really be here? Is this the quiet, beautiful place she was talking about? Me and Mary talked a lot about Silent Hill. She even showed me all her pictures. She really wanted to come back. That's why I'm here. Maybe you'll get it if you see the other letter. The one, Mary. Huh? I must have dropped it. Laura. I gotta find it. Laura! Man, even that cutscene. This game, like, it still, it still gets me. Like that, that really hit me. Like, I think that letter's really fucking sad, and it's like the fish key. Drawing of a cat, Laura. A cat. And <laughs> um, Z Matrix, I saw. You, sorry, Z Maratrix. I saw what you were saying there about the the letter in the nightmare version of the Silent Hill Hotel. I have- I don't know what that's about. I- you have me intrigued. Oh shit 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 Uh, uh, it's- Ah! Uh, no! So yeah, basically abstract daddies are the common- Uh. They're the common enemy of the hotel, which let's not even think about what that might mean. Um, but they're like nowhere near as tough as they are like in that boss fight. Okay, um, I'm gonna keep going until I hit a natural save point. Mr. James Sunderland, the video you forgot here is being kept in the office on the first floor. Oh, I forgot we got the great knife. God damn. Fish key. Got the Little Mermaid music box. Okay. So, if anyone who's here who doesn't know what's happening, basically, this is James, right? And James, three years ago, came to Silent Hill with his very sick wife, and they had a really, really nice time. But... Three, then unfortunate shit happens and James loses his wife to disease and he kind of just gets like we don't really know what happens in the three years but it seems like he basically got super depressed and his life fell apart but then he gets a letter from his dead wife Mary to come to Silent Hill and that's what's brought him here and we've basically spent the last eight hours of this game kind of wandering to Silent Hill's different locations and you meet all these other people who seem really confused and out of it just like James but one of them is a woman named Maria who looks exactly like Mary except she's dressed all like sexy like and sometimes it nearly seems like she's Mary and then sometimes she's from Maria like herself and where things start to get really fucking cool is that the second you enter the hotel room or the second you enter the hotel you have this letter from Mary and if you examine it it's it's completely blank and this is the first time it's been blank the whole game the entire rest of the game that's just something you can read there's nothing written on the stationery so it's like oh, I love that detail um, so with that in mind let's get exploring let's go to the gift shop couldn't possibly be nothing spooky in the big no 
Not even happening. Oh, a key. Got the key to room 312. The key where Mary and I stayed. spaces okay this is such a good creepy hotel like Jesus Christ okay okay we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do our floor sweep Broken. Broken. Mm -mm. Okay. So that wing's all locked off. We've already explored everywhere else. Let's head up the stairs. All of a sudden, the silence feels way worse than like the omening, the the droning, ominous stuff. Shit's locked. Shit's locked. Oh jeez. Oh no. Oh, I don't like that. Down you go. Oh, there's two of them. That's not good. Okay, the pistol. The pistol. The pistol. It's not getting it done, guys. It's not even kind of getting it done. Let's uh, let's switch over to our good old fashioned shotgun. That's it. Oh jeez. I don't want to see what's under the bed. I don't want to see what's under the bed. Ugh. I don't like them. I I don't like them one goddamn bit. Looks broken. Looks broken. Let's get that camera behind James. We don't want anything sneaking up on us. Uh, Air Taco 88 asks, what's your favorite area in Silent Hill 2? I love the bowling alley. I think that's such a beautiful moment in the game. But I also love this hotel. I think it's really freaky, really like weird and frightening, and it's it's just kind of great. Um But honestly, I like I love there's no there's no weak part of the game. Like I like it all. It's locked. 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 Okay, okay. And then like out the window of the hotel, even though it's nighttime, it's completely white. Which is kind of cool. Okay. What, what do we got here? God, we got first, we have like 10 first aid kits, so we really don't need any more. But um, I'm happy to. Shotgun shells. Handgun bullets, handgun bullets. The bag is locked. Hmm. All right. What are you looking at, James? What are you looking at, buddy? Shotgun shells, cool, cool. Um, coming into my apartment earlier today and like there's a hallway you have to go through to get to like um, like the front lobby and this dude had like set up like this weird Halloween stand in the front lobby and he had like this weird mask on and he came over and he was like Wah! like trying to frighten me and then he put his hand on me and part of me was like I think I'd kind of be within my rights to kick his ass at this point, but I didn't because I'm not like a monster, but it was fucking weird. Thank you so much, Karate Kub. I appreciate that. Um, but it was, it was like, it was kind of annoying. I feel like it's, it was kind of like one of those things where you're at a con and do you ever see people who like role play their cosplay, but they like also want to talk, but they want to talk in character and you're just like, um, I don't know how to engage with this. I remember before I had a girl and she was, what's the sexy dude from Attack on Titan called? It's been so long since I watched that show. You know, the sexy mean dude, the guy everyone likes, him. And she was cosplaying him, 
And it was a really good cosplay, but she wouldn't stop talking like him. And it got super weird and uncomfortable. Levy, Levy, yep, that's it. Or it's Levi or whatever. Okay. Okay. Up to the third floor. Uh, Mr. ESB asks, have you played or finished Judgment? You know, like, I'm, I've am i gone back and forth on Judgment a lot this year. Um, it's a cool game, but I also think it's my least favorite, like, Yakuza game, even though, you know, it's not technically a Yakuza game. Um, I've talked about it a lot on the boss cast, and I want to give it one more proper go before the year's ends, but I never quite got into it, even though, like, I think there's cool things about it. It's locked. Okay, okay. James. Did you guys hear that? I don't know if I'd ever noticed that before, but you hear Mary or Maria calling out for James just as you exit there. That is beautiful. That was a really, really good little touch. Um, Six. Foxcade, you are right. Like, to me, Zero and Six are two, maybe two of the best... Uh, like, they're my two favorite games in the series. And starting all again and, like, getting invested in a whole new set of characters was kind of difficult. Um, I know you were super into it, Foxcade. I know our buddy Rebecca was as well. But it just... I feel like at this point I've maybe had to struggle a little too much with it. That it's probably not ever going to click properly. But I also want to give it another go. But man, there's so many fucking games out this year. Like, um... I just downloaded Outer Worlds there. That seems really cool. I downloaded Outer Wilds also. There's a book open on top of the desk. It looks like a medical book. I've already read enough medical books. None of them ever did any good. Aw, oh, poor James. Um, oh, shotgun shells. Yeah, they just want to load you up with ammo with this section. Yeah, 2019 has been a banger of a year, Fox. And it's weird because, like, I was listening to the Bombcast or the Beastcast, and they were th talking about how they thought it was a really weak year for games. And I just don't get that at all. Like, I have... I am struggling... Like, even Luigi's Mansion is out today. Um, and I'm gonna... I think... Um, I think Michelle's gonna get me that for my birthday. Um, and I'm super excited to play that as well. And I also play an Outer Wilds, which is a different game to the Outer Worlds, and that seems really cool. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm literally like drowning in games at the moment. It also doesn't help that I'm trying to make work my way through two like 70 hour RPGs. I'm playing. Uh, I started playing Tales. I think it's Tales of Bessaria or something like that. Um, came highly recommended from friends, and I played the open and hours. And yeah, it seems kind of cool, but I need to, I need to play more. Mm -mm -mm. Gonna, gonna bust those ghosts. That's a fucking great shot. Look at that. Oh, oh, this game. Just a horrible infinite void of nothingness. Is this where we came in? No, I don't I don't know if it is. It totally is. Okay. My awful sense of direction strikes again. Thank you so much, Rubber Monkey. I appreciate it, dude. Okay, let's start. Let's start doing our sweep again. Okay, we got a little place up here. Okay, what keys have we got? And music box with a figure from Perry. Mermaid touch found at the garden fountain. We got the fish key. Key holder. It was on top of the restaurant table. We got the key to Hotel 312. 
we're not going to be able to get to 312 for a while. So, let's see. I think we need to go back into the lobby and we might be able to use the music box with something there, I think. Oh, God fucking damn it. Oh. Oh, the, the radio didn't... That wasn't that wasn't my fault. I didn't get... Oh, God, this is another... I, the radio didn't do its job and I was caught unawares and no one's allowed to say that was me getting scared because it's not. That's the game's fucking fault. This scary game scared me, but it was... It scared me wrong. It's locked. Oh, this is... Hmm. I got... I got a can of thinner. Oh. Um, Mr. McGreg, yeah, I've heard Luigi's Mansion looks awesome. I'm super, super excited to play it. So let's see, kitchen bar. Okay, we'll check out the bathrooms. Oh, that shook me a little bit. I don't know about this, guys. I don't know about this. Play in front of the change or something. Seat of the princess who awoke from death. Doesn't sound quite right. Seems quite wrong. Maybe. Or maybe what, James? Maybe what? guess with that we're gonna head back up to the second floor and see what we see have we looked at everything down here the cafe it's luca might try open the cafe door one more time um, dead fish walking i do believe i recognize your name from the patreon dude thank you so much for thank you so much for supporting we really appreciate it look around in here but we're gonna have a little explore uh, this restaurant always really reminds me of one of the restaurants from um silence hill 3 where you find the dead dog a drawing done by laura a cat. But there is a, some, a locked door there. 204. Reading room. Lock room. Okay, let's check out that locked door. Locked. Hmm. Hmm. I'm not sure where we go. Okay, let's have a look at 204 and 202. Good. 
Crows and Birds asks, since it's Halloween, what's the scariest horror movie you've ever seen? Um, I think for me, the one that did like the most lasting damage was The Shining. I think I told this story in a video way, way back, but I remember when um, I was a kid, I was staying over at a friend's house and Twister was playing and we're all like, oh, let's watch Twister, you know, that'll be fun. And um, there's one bit in Twister where the tornado destroys like a, um, like a drive-in cinema and the movie playing on screen is The Shining. And just the image of the two little girls standing there scared the shit out of me. Like it really, really scared me. But my friend had already seen it because his parents were like, oh, cool. Okay. Key to 204. We're, we're doing it. We're getting there. Um, and so his parents had, like, let him see The Shining. And he, like, told me all about it and scared the fucking shit out of me. And I had to, like, get my, like, I think my mom to come pick me up. And I felt like such a wuss. And for, like, a year, the thought of The Shining was so scary to me. And the scariest part was that he, he was... um. He was telling me that there was something weird in room 237 or... Oh, I can't remember what number it is, but I know the number, the movie, and the book are different. But he was telling me that, like, his mom wouldn't let him watch that part. So the fact that, like, this mom's, this kid's mom would let him watch the whole film, but even for her, there was, like, something in room 237 that was too fucked up to look at. That really scared me so eventually after a year of having nightmares about this movie i haven't seen my mom's just like okay look we'll let john watch the shining how bad can it actually be hopefully it'll get him out of this kind of funk he's in and it scared the shit out of me so badly and um i really was terrified by it and over the years like okay just let's just over the years, I came to really love it um, and, like, just appreciate what a goddamn fantastic movie it is. But I think that's, like, always going to be the one for me that, like, just completely messed me up. Hmm. Weird. Okay. Oh, this room is unsettling. It's just like... Holy shit! There's photographs of James and all the other characters on the bed. That's really cool. And fucking weird. Okay. <laughs> Flanage, could it be John? No. No. The only time a ghost has ever spelt my name out was that time we did a Ouija board. I think I told that story on the boss cast. That... That was... That was a strange occurrence. I guess it's the kind of time for scary stories. So yeah, um, before I used to live with this roommate, and I've probably talked about him before because he's a very unusual person. His name was Mike. And Mike was from um, London. I think it was London anyway. He's from England. And he was... Uh, and um, Mike was from England and when we moved in together he got real into like conspiracy theories and specifically stuff about like alternate dimensions so stuff about like um, reptilians and clockwork elves and all this kind of stuff got real into like David Icke and all that sort of thing and the idea of like crossing into another dimension i think seemed to really fascinate him like he would really read up all this shit about dmt and all this kind of stuff and um where's the staff elevator um so one one night me and him are there and he's like john do you want to do a ouija board and so i'm like sure um employee elevator and so we, we write out our own little Ouija board and we get a glass tumbler and we both put our fingers on it and it actually like starts moving and I know like the kind of obvious thing is like well Mike was trying to fuck with you and 
Mike is maybe the only one of my friends I have who doesn't enjoy fucking with me on a regular basis. But, and like, I'm like, holy shit, this is, this is kind of nuts, you know? But what we're getting is like absolute nonsense. Just random letters. It could have just been like, you know, minor muscle moves pushing the thing around. Like, and it's, it's like, it's interesting, but it's not like, it's not really spooky or anything. It's just like, oh, that's an interesting little party trick. more health drinks um and so oh we're like oh that that's pretty interesting that's kind of fun and um, but then the next week brian comes over and for those of you who listen to the boss cast that's brian from the boss cast and um we're after a few weeks Ugh! It's one person. Yeah. Then why? Wait. Hmm. Yeah, I think it's actually telling me I'm too fat. Um. But anyway, so. And we show Brian, like, we we're like, oh, yeah, yeah, we can try it. And Bri Brian's, like, a curious fellow, and he wants to try it. And so we start doing it again. And again, like, the Tumblr moves. And we're like, oh, cool, huh? that's kind of funny, or whatever. Um, But we do it for, like, 40 minutes, and it's just the same shit. It's, like, complete nonsense. Um, put an item in the shelf. Oh. Put on shelf. Do we have to put all our shit on the shelf? Okay, what's heavy? What's heavy? Our rifle would be heavy. I don't... I'm not leaving my shotgun. No goddamn way. God! Um... So anyway, we're doing it. And, um... So I think, but eventually we start like redoing the configuration. And so it's one person talking to the like ghost and then one person talking to, and then two people with their hands on the tumbler and letting the tumbler move around. And, um, uh, is it okay? Do I have to put everything? I guess I might. Okay. Um, So, so Brian, so like then eventually we get to the configuration where it's Brian talking to the ghost and me and Mike with our hands on the tablet. Oh, God damn it. How heavy are these photographs? God damn it. And we're asking it and it's like is there a spirit there and the tumbler real smooth floats over to yes oh, shit this is bad and um that was a little disconcerting because it was like oh that's fucking weird um and so then anyway we keep going and it's like and we go do you have a message for any of us and it just says yes again and Brian says, who do you have a message for? And it goes, J-O-N. And I'm like, what the fuck? And then um, uh, and I I'm getting like a little unsettled. I'm like, uh, I don't know about this. This is kind of fucking weird. Maybe we should stop. And um, Brian's like, no, 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 let's keep going. Let's keep going. And so he asks another one. And so he says, okay, uh, what's your message for John? And it spells out G U. In, and I'm like, oh fuck this, what? And so I drag, uh, I drag the tumbler over to goodbye, and I'll never forget it. Mike looks me dead in the eye, and he just goes, "That's not how it works, John." And then the tumbler floats over to no, and it spells out G O N E, gone. 
And it's like, what the fuck? And so Brian asked the ghost's name, and it spells out Ashley. And I had a babysitter when I was little called Ashley, but she's still alive, so I don't know what the fuck that's about. And, um... There's potatoes and onions here, smells slightly rotten. Um... Mm. And so, eventually, like, I'm actually, like, pretty freaked out at this point, and I, I don't like this, because, like, I don't want to mess with no ghosts, and I don't necessarily believe in ghosts, but I also, I, I don't, I have enough going on, you know, I don't, I don't need none of that. Um, and so, Brian says, okay, Ashley, is there anything you can say to John that would maybe calm him down a little bit? And it spells out N... I C and then it stops and then it spells out B O Y and then it just floats over to goodbye and that's it and I was so fucking weirded out and from that point on I was like listen I don't know if Ouija boards are real I don't see any like scientific validity I think the chance that it was the subconscious of me and Mike is way stronger but at the same fucking time that was enough for me and I was like I'm never doing that shit again and yeah that really that kind of that, that scared me quite a bit um I don't even have my light. <laughs> yeah, nice boy. <laughs> um, Mike, yeah. Mike got into doing the Ouija board with his brother. <laughs> and um, he was telling me before how one time the Ouija board spelt out. Um, ah, okay. Ugh. Yeah, just to watch exactly. Like, it's not a ghost, but at the same time, why, why risk it? But, um, sometimes my friends like to joke that I'm haunted because weird stuff like that does happen. Like, has, ah, god damn it. Oh, I gotta stop telling ghost stories and then playing this fucking ghost game. I think maybe there's more stuff down here I wanna do. Want to do a little more thorough comb? Get out, wait. Oh, oh god! Oh dear! Okay, that could have been real bad. Uh, some some stuff here. These are some narrow, narrow hallways, and I don't like it. There's no there's a can with no label on it. Uh, all right. Is there something I missed there? It's just the can. I don't see nothing else. Uh, Crows and birds ask any more ghost stories. I actually do, yeah. Mm. This is a bit of a weird one, right? But um, when I was about 16, uh, my parents placed... Oh, look at this bar. Oh man, this looks so good in the enhanced edition. Oh man, look at a little fucking jukebox. There's a jukebox here, it doesn't play, it must be broken. Fantastic. I bet this is how James Sunderland dances. I bet like he just gets into the middle of the floor and this is what he does. Um, I tried to use the bar key, but it's too dark to find the keyhole. There's a lamp on the counter, but there's no light bulb. I can't turn it on. Fantastic. I... Hotel bar. Okay. 
So I haven't been in the liquor storage or the electrical room. Let's get right back in there. Um, so yeah, um, when I was about 16, my parents started like, they were like, ah, John's all right, we can leave him alone. And so they'd kind of go away for like weeks at a time and they'd just leave me in the house by myself, which I honestly kind of loved. Uh, I had a cat and a dog and they were both pretty cool. And I'd just hang out with them a lot. Um, and then I'd have like the odd kind of party and stuff. And it was, it was fun. But um, one time, uh, one time I was in my room and my door was closed and I was just like playing Street Fighter or something. And next thing I just hear just on like the just on the door to my bedroom which was really really unsettling because obviously I was in a house by myself and um, so I get up I open the door and no one's there like not one person is there and um, oh the videotape oh fuck there's a can opener okay cool yeah we got the, I got I got way too excited for that can opener I just like making progress um and I was like that's fucking weird but it was like I wasn't that scared either I was just like that's really strange like I didn't feel a need to like call anyone or anything I was just like okay that's really weird and it was but the weird thing is it keeps happening right so over the course of the following year um a couple of years even I'm like Every now and then I'll be doing something usually completely alone, completely by myself, and I'll just hear on like a door or something like that, and I'd always check it and there's nothing there. And like, hey, I have an overactive imagination. It could literally just be that. Like it doesn't I don't I don't necessarily think it's a ghoster. I just know that like my brain thinks it heard something. And um this went on for years like for years and years and years i would like be alone and i would just hear like that just three knocks like that and it was it was weird you know like it was really really strange i remember when i actually moved into that apartment um i moved in with my friend mike and jess and we were there i think it was the fourth or fifth night and at about 9 p.m. we heard a knock on the front door and it was the same like and that's weird because like there's a gate to my apartment complex like you can't you couldn't get in unless you live there and so we all came out of our rooms and we were like what the fuck and I go to the front door and I open it and surely enough nothing's there and I had told them both this story before and they both started freaking out. And my friend Mike starts going, This wasn't part of the deal, John! This wasn't part of the deal! Uh, <laughs> um, but after that, it died down for like a couple of months until Michelle moved in with us. Um, Michelle being my longtime girlfriend and now fiance. And um, then it started getting really bad again. To the point that, like, she... I remember one time she got, like, kind of upset about it. And she was like, I know you're not, like, doing anything. And it's not your fault. But I I wish that, like, we could just stop talking about it. And we could just stop giving it any attention. Because it would be weird shit. Like, it would be on the wall in between our bedrooms, you know? And that's, that's some pretty disconcerting shit. And so what I said was like, okay, I'll, I'll stop telling the story and I'll stop doing stuff like that because obviously this is only making us more paranoid, you know? Um, and so I did. And then for a long, long time it stopped. Oh, I fucking don't like that noise. Um, oh, that's the wrong way. And... Oh, okay. And... Um, but then one morning, we're, it's a Saturday morning, and I think we were watching either Steven Universe or Hunter Hunter, just me and Michelle alone in the apartments. And next thing on the front door, we hear, and I'm like, I'm kind of, I'm like a little excited because I'm like, oh shit, this has not happened in a while, you know? And um, so I get up and I go to the front door and I open it a crack 
and I just see this white smiling fucking face behind it. And I'm, it scares the shit out of me. And I look and it's like this young girl. And she's like, she must, she couldn't have been older than like 22. And she's in this weird little like cocktail dress. And she gives me like the creepiest fucking smile to the point that I'm like, okay, this girl's like on something. She's either really drunk or she's on something. And she starts trying to force her way into the apartment. And I have to like push her back. And I'm just like, who the fuck are you? And I'm scared shitless because, like, part of me is like, oh, God, a stranger is trying to come into my apartment. Part of me is like, it's the ghost. The ghost is finally here to take on what it wants. And um, so I just go and she and she smiles at me and goes, you remember me. I, I'm, I'm Dave's friend. And I'm like, I don't know you. I, and she's like, we met last night when we were out. And I was like, uh, we were not out last, I wasn't, you have the wrong apartments. And she's like, and she's like really drunk and really out of it. And she's like, no, 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 we, 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 we were, we were out last night. I remember. And she's like, you're having me on. And I was like, I really am not at all. And, um, so eventually anyway i managed to convince her that like this is not a joke and that like she's like not there that she's like at the wrong apartment and so eventually anyway i close the door on her and i tell michelle what happened and it's so fucking weird and like i'm freaked the fuck out but then after a little bit i start thinking about it and i actually start feeling like a little bad because i'm like ah shit like that was just basically this pretty much a child you know like she wasn't old and I don't know if she knows where she is or, like, if her parents know where, like, she is. Like, and she she was, you know, she was pretty young. And so I go, you know what, I should probably just check that she's not, like, that she's not, like, you know, going to get mixed up in something bad. Because she was in a really vulnerable state. And um, so I go back out into the hall and she's just standing in the hall completely still with her back to me. And... It was a really, really strange, disconcerting visual. And um, so I go, here, sorry. And I just say, listen, is there anyone I can call, like, to pick you up or something like that? And she hands me her phone. And this phone is, like, from 10 fucking years ago. It is, like, it is so old. Like, it's not, and and it, I, I was, like taken aback by how old it was this was like a phone that like maybe one of the first phones i got like a phone my dad would have and i'm looking through it and there's all these numbers in it and a lot of them don't seem to really make sense as numbers like they're they're not 087 numbers they're just they a lot of them just seem like weird ramp like jumbles but maybe like she's foreign or something i don't have a fucking clue and so she goes yeah call this number and it was a number for just some dude. I don't remember what his name was. And I called it and it just had the like, in Ireland when you call a phone number and like it's not connected. And it just goes, do, 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 do. And I was just like, uh, okay, is there is there maybe anyone else I can call for you? And um, when the number doesn't ring, she starts to get kind of like nearly kind of freaked out and she starts getting real skittish and then she like grabs her phone out of my hands and like pretty much runs out of the apartment and I never saw her again and it was so fucking weird. <laughs>